Today I'm going to show you how to use Wireshark, which is a free open source tool for analyzing packet captures. Now you can do a whole lot with Wireshark. You can, uh, like I said, you can analyze the packet captures and, and dig down into the, the details of each packet, uh, but you can also capture packets moving across the network. So first, if we want to capture network data, we go over here to the capture section and we select the adapter that you want to capture data on. For this example, we'll use my Wi-Fi connection because that's what I'm connected to. And you click start. And immediately, as you can see, you start getting network data. And we'll go through this in the second part of this video and talk about what all this, uh, what all this means and uh, how you can drill down and, and get data. But first, just wanted to show you how to capture data. Now, when you're done capturing and you've gotten everything you think you need, go ahead and click Stop under Capture menu, and it'll stop capturing that data. And then we can go and save that packet capture as whatever we'd like to call it. So now that you've captured some data, let's go in and open that example again and look at that data. So we just go here to open and click on our PCAP file. In this case, it's this example file, and we can start looking at all this data. Now, as you can see, we get the time uh, from the beginning of the capture, the source IP address, the destination IP address, the protocol, the length or the size of the packet, and some info on the packet itself. Uh, now, during this capture, I went down and accessed uh, NewYorkTimes.com, uh, as you can see here, NYTimes.com. So if we wanted to go in and look at the connection data about this, we can go in, uh, right click, and say Follow TCP Stream. And what this will do is it combines all of the packets from this session and we can go in and look now, at now the red text the entire represents one machine machines. and the blue text represents another in this case the red text is my machine and the blue text is the new york times web server so here you can see my git request and then if we scroll through here you can start to see all the images coming through and the different um, text and all of the different things about the article and if I were to want to then save that, I can go in and save that entire conversation as a text file for later analysis. And that's a really great way to combine uh, a bunch of packets because you can go down and as you see, you can, you can look at the hexadecimal data as well as the, the ASCII text on the side there but it starts to become a little bit difficult to look through every single packet like that and to see what the actual conversation between the two machines is. So that's where that right click and follow TCP stream becomes extremely useful in compiling all that data for us. And then if we want to be able to go back and look at the rest of the packet capture again, we simply go up here, click clear because it creates this filter expression, click clear, and we'll have the rest of the packet capture again if we want to keep looking through the different potential sessions and items that may have appeared. Another useful tool uh, is the ability to, during a capture, uh, specify exactly what you're looking for. So for example, let's say that I know of a specific IP address that I want to capture data about. So we can come in here to this menu, click capture filter, IP address, and you see then it gives us that filter string and then we can go in and change the filter name to, and we're going to get only this IP address, which is again that New York Times IP address. It's important to change the filter string because that's what's really working in this. Click OK. Choose the adapter. In this case, the wireless one is already selected. And go ahead and click Start. 
Now we'll begin the capture now. I'm going to come over here and see if I can generate some traffic. Refresh this New York Times page again. And there you go. You can see that data coming through. And it's only for that one IP address. So that's a great way to filter only a certain kind of data uh, when you may have other processes going on that are also generating network traffic that you're not interested in.